Hello everyone, I'm Caroline. Have you ever gone camping and slept in a tent or made a little hut in your backyard? What do you think it'd be like to hang out in a special little hut for a week? Well, there is a Jewish holiday for that. It's called Sukkot. Like all Jewish holidays, there's an interesting story and meaning behind this holiday. It's a time to remember what it was like for the Jewish people a long time ago who had to live in the dry, harsh desert for 40 years. So stay tuned as we learn more about the holiday of Sukkot. Welcome back! Today, we're going to talk about the Jewish holiday called Sukkot. After the more serious time of the High Holy Days, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, there comes a long period of joy and celebration. Sukkot is a week-long festival that starts five days after Yom Kippur. Remember we talked about the Torah, a very old and holy book of scrolls that's like a guide for living a good life? Well, the Torah actually has two different names for Sukkot. One is called Chag HaAsif, which means the festival of harvest. It's a time to thank God for all of Earth's good food and for the rain that helps it grow. The Torah also refers to Sukkot as Chag HaSukkot, which means festival of huts. It's to remember the shelters that God gave the Jewish people as they wandered in the desert for 40 years after they were freed from being enslaved in Egypt thousands of years ago. As soon as Yom Kippur ends, people begin building their own temporary little hut outside called a sukkah. For one week, the goal is for people to live in the sukkah as much as possible. People eat their meals there, often dining under the stars. They play games inside the sukkah, and some people even sleep there. Because so much time is spent in the sukkah, people decorate it and make it as beautiful and welcoming as they can. They could be decorated with leaves, fruit, drawings, so many things. How do you think you decorate your sukkah? Let's talk more about the meaning and symbols of this holiday. During Sukkot, many observe something in Hebrew called Ushpizin, which symbolically welcomes many guests from the Bible to the Sukkah. The list includes Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Sarah, Rachel, and others. Every day they put prayer books on a special chair at the table inside the sukkah, which represents saving a seat for these special guests. Another tradition is shaking the lulav and etrog. Those are Hebrew words for some special items used on Sukkot. The lulav is a palm frond, myrtle twigs and willow twigs bundled together. The etrog is a citron fruit. It's like a really big lemon. People hold these items and shake them north, south, east, and west to show that God is everywhere. Holding these four things together also represents different types of personalities in a community, showing that everyone, no matter how different, has a role in the world. And to be the very, best we can be, we must grow and learn from each other. After eight days of Sukkot, a one-day festival called Shmini Atzeret is celebrated. Meals are still eaten in the sukkah, but traditional Sukkot blessings are no longer said. It's a time for great joy leading into the next holiday called Simchat Torah. Recognize the word Torah there? <gasps> I bet you can guess what the holiday focuses on. Yes, the Torah. We'll talk about Simchat Torah in our next video, and you'll discover why it's such a joyous holiday with synagogue services so different from any other holiday. I hope you enjoyed this video about Sukkot.
Check out the PDF that goes with this lesson for more information and fun activities that go along with the video. Thanks for joining me today, and in the meantime, remember to always be clever.